located 12 miles south of Pripyat, is the Duguay 3 radar receiver, and I've spent a lot of time researching it. Coming up is how this radar works, explained so it's easy to understand and not too serious. It's what the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che channel is all about. Officially, there were only ever two radar installations, this being Duguay 1, but everyone calls it Duguay 3. This is called an over-the-horizon radar system with a transmitter and receiver. This is the receiver. The tower is all about receiving radar signals from the front and it's helped by these horizontal wires behind it to reflect any signals back at the elements in the white cages at the front. These signals go back to a control room behind the radar with some pretty cool elevators in it. The Chernobyl power station cost 3 billion rubles to build, while this radar installation cost a whopping 7 billion rubles. The radar also consumed a quarter of the power station's total power output. Check out the scale of this structure, it's absolutely massive. Many have climbed it, but this guy has a long way to go. This receiving radar is half a mile long and 146 metres high. This is about the same height as the Strata Tower and the Pan Peninsula, both having 48 floors. For those who don't know these buildings, here is the Eiffel Tower as a comparison. So this is the receiver. Information and videos of the transmitter are pretty hard to find. The transmitter is located to the northeast of the receiver. If you wanted to walk from the receiver to the transmitter, it would take you all day as it's 61 miles away, or about 36 miles in a straight line. The Soviets ignored rules about what frequencies could be used and for 13 years annoyed everyone with the radio receiver in its path. This being aircraft, international broadcasting stations, and before the age of the internet, loads of people in their sheds trying to listen to these radio broadcasts. Must have been a right pain in the ass, especially with no internet. The radar receiver faces north, the most obvious route for any missiles heading from the US to the USSR, as it was then. But radar only works in straight lines, and if you haven't noticed, the Earth is round, which means the radar wouldn't have much of a range. The official information is that it's a backscatter radar, which provides warning of missile launches by detecting alterations in ionosphere propagation caused by the depletion of ions by missile exhaust plumes. Good luck with working all that out, but here I've done it for you. Surrounding the Earth is the ionosphere, which starts at about 50 miles, going to about 350 miles up. The ionosphere, believe it or not, contains ions, which are particularly sensitive to certain radio waves. It is created by ultraviolet rays from sunlight that strikes the top of the Earth's atmosphere. While one layer of the ionosphere will absorb some radio signals, there is a higher layer which can bend some signals back down to Earth, making long distance radio reception possible. The sea is especially good for making the radio waves reflect back up into the sky for another hop around the ionosphere. So the signals get even further around the globe. The higher radio waves reflect from a higher angle in the ionosphere, while the lower rays skim the ionosphere and travel further. Aim the radar too high and the rays pass through the ionosphere into space. As radio waves from the Duguay 3 transmitter hit this vast area of the ionosphere, the ionosphere itself reflects some of the signal back along its original path. This is called backscatter and this is what's picked up by the Duguay 3 radio receiver. When the signal makes it to land, this is the far superior signal return. Here is an example in slow motion of just one pulse travelling from the transmitter, hitting the Earth's surface, then travelling back around the globe to the receiver. You'll notice that after hitting the Earth, the signal bounces back into the sky to travel even further around the globe. This is why the receiver is so large to pick up signals no matter how small from these bounces. To build up an image of what is happening a quarter around the globe requires the radar to transmit continuously. 
This is actually how fast it is, with the actual sound as picked up by radios on the frequency. People call this the Russian woodpecker. I call it the Russian helicopter, but I've never actually heard a proper woodpecker before. What's actually shown in the control room from these radio signals may never be known. But after performing some research, the constant radar returns may build up a kind of graph like this. So this is what happens. The air does not cause any backscatter, but the ionosphere does. The return is fairly low. When the radar return from reflecting on land gets back to the receiver, this causes a spike. Combined with all the waves transmitted and received, the land can be plotted out in a very low resolution, which may appear to be completely useless. Perhaps useless for spying on people in their gardens, but not useless for detecting missiles. A missile return may appear like this. If the US did ever launch a ballistic missile towards the east, it would have to travel into space to eventually come down at its target. The missile launch would seriously disturb or deplete the ions in the ionosphere, possibly causing a blank spot which may be picked up like this. It may not look much to you, but for the Soviets monitoring the radar, it might be picked up as quickly as a giant porcupine in a nudist resort in the swimming pool during pool party time. Oh Liz, if I said there was something behind me with hundreds of pricks, would you believe me? Oh Frank, I thought it was you! The missile's flight time would give the Soviets time to respond with something before it hit. Oh crap. Thanks for watching and to see the rest of this series of videos which mainly focuses on the derelict lifts in and around Pripyat, click on the playlist or see the video description.